the word rockers. Now, that's just a fun word to say. It invokes images of good times, good food, and an atmosphere filled with the joy of devouring a delicious hamburger. However, the reality of the Fuddruckers burger chain is a roller coaster of ups and downs that spans over four decades. In this comprehensive narrative, we'll delve deep into the turbulent history of Fuddruckers, a once popular hamburger chain that has seen its fortunes rise, fall, and rise again, against all odds. Fuddruckers had its humble beginnings in 1980 when it was founded by Phil Romano. A visionary entrepreneur, Romano had a simple yet compelling idea to provide a burger that was a step above typical fast food offerings without venturing into the formal dining territory. In his own words, he believed the world needed a better hamburger. Thus, Freddy Fuddruckers was born. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button and the notification bell to stay updated on our daily videos. The original name, Freddy Fuddruckers, though later shortened to Fuddruckers, was a quirky attention grabber designed to pique curiosity. Within a year and a half, the second Fuddruckers restaurant opened its doors in Houston, Texas. However, this was just the beginning of Fuddruckers' eventful journey. In 1983, Fuddruckers made its first shift in ownership with a public stock offering. This influx of capital allowed the chain to expand rapidly with over 100 locations established within four years. But the fast-paced expansion came at a cost. Financial strain due to hasty real estate decisions and poor management of company-owned locations. It was a stumble, albeit the first of many. In 1988, Fuddruckers merged with DACA International, a company specializing in food service contracts, particularly cafeterias in settings like universities and hospitals. This merger aimed to enhance efficiency through joint food purchasing and operations. One of Fuddruckers' unique selling points was its toppings bar, where customers could customize their burgers. This cafeteria-style approach set them apart and provided customers with a sense of control over their dining experience. But as the years passed, Fuddruckers started to shift focus away from these unique features, causing their world's greatest hamburger claim to lose credibility. As the 1990s progressed, Fuddruckers found itself facing an identity crisis. The chain grew considerably, almost doubling in size, and even experimented with dual concept locations inside Home Depots. But it was becoming evident that the essence of their brand was slipping away, leading to consumer confusion. In 1997, DACA International underwent a transformation, splitting its cafeteria business from its restaurant holdings, forming unique casual restaurants. However, just a year later, in 1998, Fuddruckers was sold to King Cannon for $43 million. King Cannon, led by Michael Cannon, an established figure in the restaurant industry, aimed to reinvigorate the brand. Michael Cannon introduced a rock and roll theme to Fuddruckers and initiated updates, renovations, and menu expansions. These changes did bring attention to the brand, but didn't provide a sustainable boost. By 2010, Fuddruckers faced bankruptcy, another event that led to changes in ownership. In 2011, Tavistock, a private equity firm, acquired Fuddruckers' assets for $40 million. However, this ownership change was short-lived. Barely a month later, the assets were resold, this time for $61 million, to Luby's, a popular cafeteria-style restaurant chain. The vision was to combine Luby's and Fuddruckers to cater to both adult and family-oriented markets. Unfortunately, the expected synergies didn't materialize. Luby's, already grappling with falling sales and high debt, spent an additional $11 million to acquire Cheeseburger in Paradise, attempting to combine three struggling restaurant chains. By 2018, same-store sales for Fuddruckers were consistently dropping, leading to the closure of various locations. The cafeteria-style dining model was no longer in demand, and operational and financial problems from earlier years continued to plague the brand. The COVID-19 pandemic further exacerbated Fuddruckers' challenges. By mid-2020, the brand was teetering on the brink of collapse. But in 2021, a ray of hope emerged when Black Titan Franchise Systems, owned by Nicholas Perkins, acquired the remaining 92 Fuddruckers locations for $18.5 million. Sir. Perkins became the first African-American with 100% ownership of a national burger franchise. Perkins expressed his belief in the strength of Fuddruckers franchisees and his determination to stabilize, reposition, and ultimately revitalize the brand. While Fuddruckers had been circling the drain for years, it seemed that there was still a glimmer of hope for this once iconic burger chain. So what does the future hold for Fuddruckers? Can it rise from the ashes? 
and reclaim its status as the purveyor of the world's greatest hamburger? The answer is uncertain, but there are factors working in its favor. Rediscovering its roots, Fuddruckers' unique appeal lies in its commitment to freshness, with meat cut and ground daily, buns baked from scratch, and a toppings bar that allows customers to personalize their burgers. If Black Titan franchise systems can re-emphasize these core values and recapture the essence of the brand, there's a chance for a resurgence. Adaptation to changing tastes. Fuddruckers faces a fiercely competitive market with evolving consumer preferences and a growing demand for healthier and more diverse food options. Its success will depend on its ability to adapt to these changes while staying true to its roots. Capitalizing on nostalgia. Few Druckers has a history that spans over four decades. It has been a part of countless family outings and celebrations. Leveraging this nostalgia could help rekindle interest in the brand among both old and new customers. Rebranding and modernization. A fresh, modern brand image could help Food Druckers appeal to a younger demographic while retaining its existing customer base. Streamlined operations, efficient operations and cost management will be crucial in ensuring the brand's financial stability. In conclusion, Fuddruckers' journey has been a tumultuous one, marked by changes in ownership, shifting brand identities, and financial challenges. Whether it can stage a comeback and regain its former glory remains to be seen. The world is watching to see if Fuddruckers can once again become the go-to destination for those in search of the world's greatest hamburger. Only time will tell if this beloved burger chain can rise from its tumultuous past and reclaim its rightful place in the hearts of burger enthusiasts. It's a story of resilience, adaptation, and the enduring quest to serve the perfect burger.